the Katrina incident is where Barack Obama was introduced to us because he was asked to speak in Houston to the to the Katrina crowd. Um, so the protectors of the urn. What's in the urn? System of white supremacy. So there are, are social barriers between actualizing any real progress and us getting to what getting past the, 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 the chains of white supremacy. What did Malcolm say about this? Historically, historically, the black man has been the white man's best defense lawyer. We're going to talk about how that comes to play now because there's some, inc some incidents that occurred recently. All right? But yeah, you know, although you could be a part of the boule and you could do all these different things, the system of white supremacy will never allow a black man to see the table. You can sit at their feet as their pet. You can be used and utilize one of their tools. Jay-Z, you guys remember about four years ago it was announced that Jay-Z was purchasing the, the New Jersey Nets and they were moving to Brooklyn? Jay-Z was the owner. He was put out front as the owner of the Nets. You guys remember that, all that propaganda? You remember? See, what they didn't tell you is Jay-Z's face was used. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to get into that. What happened was, after the Nets moved to Brooklyn, they built the Barclays Center, right? When the owners had a shareholders meeting, they said, listen, calm down. Jay-Z has no control or interest in this organization. He is just a faceplate, somebody who has a minor interest. He has no clout in this company. Jay-Z had to go on record and say, I can't believe they said that my contribution didn't matter that much. I'm hurt. <laughs> but what you didn't hear about was how Jay-Z was used to gentrify Brooklyn. Now, all those black home, home owners, homeowners, those poor black homeowners, were forced out of their homes for, to build that Barclays Center. But you didn't understand. <laughs> That's the dude who owned them. Okay, see? Uh, is Jay-Z in there anywhere? In Forbes Magazine? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he got a nigga wake up call, and that's what he called it. Yo, pump your brakes. You don't sit up here with us. Get down there and eat your bowl of kibble. Be glad I let you in the house. Happened to Jay Z twice. Jay Z said, "Guess what? Um, I'm gonna shake the game up. I'm gonna get into this uh, sports agency thing where I'm gonna represent the players." NFLPA came out with Jay Z. If you don't have a college degree, you can't represent anybody. Why do I bring up this Jay Z nigga call, the nigga wake up call? Why do I bring that up? Because these are the tools that the system of white supremacy puts in play anytime one of us gets out of line. This is a get back in line tactic. You know your role tactic that's used. And anybody who thinks there's a black man in America, that you could rise and, 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 and become immersed in a part of the system of white supremacy, you will never live up to that standard. Never. Because they don't want you there. They want us dead. And that's real talk. And I'll get into the whole situation about race. Because the whole situation with race really is a social construct by the top 1%. Of the, of the world's earners, top 1%. But the problem is, middle class white America is buying into a hook, line, and sinker. And I'm going to show you evidence of that. I'm going to show you evidence of that a little later on. So we have right here the Spin Master, Bill O'Reilly, talking about what's going on in Chicago, right? Talking, uh, he's arguing down um, all, he's getting, he's gathering all the, um, the leading, the so-called black leaders, and is curling them down left and right with 94, 94% of all black murders are committed by black people. Well, hmm, you think that might have something to do with the fact that most black people live in the same areas? There's only like 10 pockets of black people, high concentrations of black people in the whole country. And that overlap, overlaid in poverty, control poverty. But you know 86% of white victims were killed by white people too? I go on and on. 
70 percent of sexual offenders in jail right now are white men. So you see somebody in a hoodie, he's a white guy, you know, hey, you know, I mean, if you see a black kid in a hoodie, he might rob you. See a white guy in a hoodie, he might rape you. Now think about that dynamic if that was played. Now I'm not saying it has any footing, but I'm just saying how we could have spent the media, how the how the information could be spent. I can't stand this kid. I hope he gets a copy of this DVD and calls me to his show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. 96% <laughs> of black murders are committed by black people. The war on black crime and crime. What about crime? What about uh, the war? What about the crime in Chicago? What about the crime in Chicago? Right? But then we got, then we got this dude here. And he might as well be sitting there with a banjo, skipping and dancing. Because he can't, he was sitting there going off on people on CNN and on Fox News talking about how Trayvon Martin was a thug, was out to kill people, all sorts of crazy things. How did George Zimmerman get all that information from his phone call to the police dispatch when all he was doing was following this young man home? If he wasn't profiling him to something else. But according to this man right here, and see, you got to watch these guys right here. Because you got to watch the people who the media runs up to with a microphone. I'm going to ask a quick question. This is the one time during the lecture we can do some interaction. Can anybody name a black leader? Yes. Okay. Can anybody else name another black leader? Huh? Okay. Can anybody name one that's living? Al Sharpton. Okay. Now let me ask you another question. Anybody name the leader of the Jewish community? I'll wait. Yeah, or the white community. Oh, oh, can, I, can somebody name the leader of the white community? What about the Latino community? What about the gay and lesbian community? Can somebody name their leader? But somehow, some way, the black community always needs to have a leader. Somebody we can run up to with a microphone and say, Sir, you're speaking on behalf of the whole black community. What do you say? Well, as a speaker and a representative of the black community, I was elected five times. Um, <laughs> no, it's ironic. Nobody here said Obama. But I asked about the black leadership. Ironic. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but the bottom line is, white supremacy always tries to choose our leaders. I'm in message boards. I'm on Facebook. And I just go through some of the some of the different pages that I'm in. I got some of the brothers in this room right now and some of the different groups that I'm in. And I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Um, and I know they're going to hit me hard in the form. But I'm ready for it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, we get to see how people all over the world feel. Because during this age of interaction um, and computers and technology and whatnot, you get to interact with people across the globe in seconds. The age of the time and the age of information is upon us. So you get to see the viewpoints from different people in different groups. So even in talking about race-related issues that had no semblance, no symptoms of insult to anybody, just questions, pure thirst. Why is it that blacks seem like we always we're always getting shorter than the stick? Why does that have to be about black people? Oh sure, affirmative action works great for us. No, 77% of all affirmative action jobs go to white women. Next question. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you know, you don't have to be black to get to get profiled. I walk around in, in a hoodie, ripped up pose, and things like that all the time. Well, you're profiling yourself. And you're mad at me. But the bottom line is, you get to see the, percep the um, perspective from the other side. And what we got right here? What we got right here is we have white man's secret weapon. We used to think it was the white woman. Oh, <laughs> it's Uncle Tom. Now we'll get into the whole Uncle Tom Sambo narrative, narrative with another thing, because that's, that's a little different. Meanwhile in America, 
Or people are trying to say that all blacks are criminals and things of that nature. The Declaration has been passing the values and lives of young black men. Jordan Davis' case is coming up. You know what happened to Jordan Davis? Jordan Davis was hanging out with his friends in the back of the SUV. They happened to be at the gas station at the wrong time with the wrong angry white man. He told them, turn their music down. Jordan Davis said, turn the music back up. Oh, you want them uppity niggas. Okay. Let off like five or six shots into the back of that car. Left, had dinner, went to a wedding, and was on his way out of town before the cop pulled up to him because people tra traced his li uh, license plate number. Yep. Ever again. Ever again. Was sitting in the, he was outside with a group of kids. A white man yells, start calling them all kinds of niggas and spooks and coons and things of that nature. He approached the man. Listen, can you please stop being disrespectful to the kids? Oh, what? Went in the house, shot him in the face. Closed the door, proceeded to cook and eat dinner, called the cops. And was upset that the police officers showed up to arrest him. When the police officers arrived to the scene and told him he was under arrest, you know what they said? You know what he said? What? Only shot a nigga. There he sends. His death is caught on video by the killer. You see this young man taking the trash out. You see the killer walk to the house, walk back out, put a gun to his chest. He told him, listen, put the gun at the mom, mom standing at the door, what are you doing to my son? I'm going to teach you, teach you a lesson. For sending people to break in my house and steal my guns. Well, we didn't steal your guns. Bow. He would have shot him more than once. But the gun jammed on him. Now he's been convicted. The killer, his killer has been convicted. But now, during the sentencing phase in Milwaukee, this, they have this thing now where they're trying to get him off for an, uh, a behavioral disorder. So he doesn't have to serve any time. Don't you love it? Boy Middleton. Boy Middleton was at his mother's house going to the back of his car that was parked in the driveway. As he was going into the car, or coming out of the car, a squad car pulled up on him. Freeze, put your hands up. He said, man, it must be a joke. I'm just getting something out of the car. Jumps out the car and got lit up. He survived. We got him lit up. There have been several more cases like this. There's a kid in New Orleans who was hopping fences now. Who knows? He might have been doing something he wasn't supposed to. But is his the penalty for his crime death? Was he about to hurt somebody? So let's take a closer example.
course, he had trust funds set up for him. You guys like Chick-fil-A? If you paid Chick-fil-A, if you had Chick-fil-A for the last couple months, you helped pay for his defense. The Koch brothers paid for his defense. And if you had some Chick-fil-A, if you had some, uh, what's their products in the store? Uh, the, the paper plates, and if you used any of those things, you helped pay for George Zimmerman's defense. Celebrity status. And they put money together to buy him a brand new gun. And to show you that they were serious, they broadcasted him, what? Getting pulled over in Texas. Oh, he's not even in Florida anymore. The officer's making reference to his gun. Why is a traffic stop newsworthy material? Because I want to, want to emphasize the fact, this is our rules, this is our way. The system of white supremacy will reign supreme. You better get back, because you know what? The dead Jim Crow's upon us. So who was this trial with? Who was really on trial? Who was really on trial? Okay. George Zimmerman? Trayvon Martin? Let's see. According to B-37, Jerv B-37, she was this, now this is how Jim Crow was played in. Remember the story? I can't recall the... the You're not supposed to go into that room and say, oh yeah, Trayvon was talking about creepy ass crackers. And then allow the defense to bring that into evidence during the trial when the prosecutor was strictly told not to make this about racial profiling. He could not use the term racial profiling. He was told by the judge that he could only use profiling. But the defense could bring that in. Oh, so Trayvon Martin was the one. Racially profiling George. The game of racial politics. Y'all saw the crows up in the corner, right? Half y'all probably didn't even peep that. Alright? Half y'all didn't even know when we was watching these cartoons, they ain't talking about us. This is Jim Crow. Didn't even know. Racist cartoons of Walt Disney and Bugs Bunny and Warner Brothers. Put forth. I used to have a three hour tape. My sister would tell you. I used to have a three hour tape of back back racist cartoons that was produced by Walt Disney and produced by the Warner Brothers. Three hour tape. This was back in like. This had to be back like the early 90s when I had that tape. So who are they describing at the trial? Dangerous. Let's think about this. Hoodie. Young, black, thugs, suspect, dangerous. See a 
lot of us, just, it just shot all over our heads. They were no longer just talking about Trayvon Martin. They were talking about him. They were talking about you, you. Talking about you, 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 and you. That's who was on trial. It wasn't just Trayvon Martin. But the bottom line is, race is a social construct. It's who you align yourself with. It's who you pervade. It's who you protect. I showed you a picture of Jesse Peterson, the reverend. He's darker than me, but white as it gets. I showed you Larry Elder. He's darker than me, but white as it gets. It's a social construct. It's who you align yourself with. So when George Zimmerman saw Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin was what white supremacy told him he represented a threat. And when he represented this threat, I am in my right to put these people in their place. Because I align myself with the systems and the tools of white supremacy. They were talking about y'all. Look at the images that get promoted. These are the images that get promoted. Our future, our youth, for real? We know this makes up like 2-3% of the kids that we see sometimes. I mean, we do have some issues here, and we're going to address that too. That's an internal discussion. That's an in-house discussion. I don't need Bill O'Reilly telling me about what's going on in my community. He's not doing it from a place of love. He's doing it as the master on the plantation, sitting on his porch, talking to the niggas in the field. Get your act together, niggas. That's what his message was. His message wasn't about us. His message was, this is why we treat y'all like this. And I have stats and figures to break it down because I'm a master of playing this game of racial politics and you're just a rookie. You show your game, you show your hand when you walk up. It's all on your sleeve. I can tell when you walk in a building you got a chip on your shoulder. All I have to do is figure out what angle you're coming from, pull out my playbook. I know your playbook because it's written all on your face. Go down this checkoff list.
And by the end of the conversation, I'll convince you that this situation had nothing to do with racial profiling or racial